And hello, 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 hello. How are you? And welcome to Maths with Mr. K, the cartoon goat that likes to explain things. So, today welcome to the second lesson of fractions and percentages. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to turn and convert fractions into percentages. Let's move on. Yesterday, we had a look at really simple and basic fractions and their equivalent in percentages. We remember that fractions means sharing into equal parts and percentages are simply fractions with the denominator of 100. So what I need you to remember is that division, fractions and percentages is the same thing. It's a different way of recording one idea. So now I want you to have a think. What is the percentage value of one quarter, one fifth, and as a challenge, maybe one third? It would be a good idea for you to pause the video and think, what would one quarter, one fifth, and one third be equivalent to in percentages? Don't worry, I will wait. Do, 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 do. Talk to your parent, talk to your friend, look it up. That's something we should remember. And pause, wait. Let's start with one quarter. One quarter is equivalent to 25%. Because 25 and 25 gives me 50. Four groups of 25. That's a messy bar model. I'm sorry, Elliot. Four groups of 25 will make 100 altogether. That's why we use percentages, because it's an easy fraction to compare. Now, what would be 100 divided into five equal parts? Well, 20, five groups of 20 would make 100. And finally, one third, that's a tricky one, because three times 33, it's 96, so 33.3, it's equivalent of a third. So let's review. One quarter is the same as 25%. One fifth is same as 20%. And one third is 33.3 percent. Remainder, pardon me. So let's convert some fractions into percentages. And let's remember that division, fractions, and percentages are all equal. They're all the same idea. So let's take a, take a fraction like, for example, 3, that's a 3, 8. Immediately, I know I can't divide 100 by 8 because it's not a factor of 8. And 3, it's a prime number, so I can't simplify the fraction, but I want to know what the percentage is. Let's say that I got three out of eight spellings and I want to know my score as a percentage. So my always method will have three steps. I will multiply it by a fraction. So I will take three eights. I'm just going to drop and I'm going to multiply it by 100, which I'm going to record as 100 once, because any whole number is a fraction out of a 1. 100 divided by 1 gives me 100. And I'm making sure that I'm multiplying the denominators correctly. So first, I'm multiplying it by 100, and 3 times 100 gives me... 
300 and 8 times 1 gives me 8. So as a, as a percentage is 308. But my work isn't done. I've just done my first step, which is times 100. And my second step will be divide by the denominator. So those are two steps. Multiply by 100, divide by the denominator. Because, as we said, division, fractions, and percentage is the same idea. So if I want to know the percentage value of 3 eighths, I need to divide 300 by 8. And it's a little trick over there. So what are we going what are we going to do right now? Is we're going to zoom in over here so we have some space. And we had three hundred three hundred eight. Okay. Um I'm still getting used to all the pens and all the possibilities in my software. So do let me know which one is the best. So I want to divide 300. I take the 300, I take the, uh, the numerator and I divide it by 8. Because that's my denom... So I divide the numerator by the denominator. Right? So... A good idea would be to help with my division is to build a tower on the side. So I'm going to count in 8 times table 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56. I'm not going to go above because 300 is the biggest product over here. So I know that my 3 times table won't go above. So now let's go. I can fit a group of 8 into 3, but I could make a group of 8 into 30 tenths. So which is the closest one? 1, 2, 3. So 3 groups of 8 are the closest ones. So that's 3 times 8 gives me 24. I'm using long division so I can see the remainder clearly. And that gives me a remainder of 6. So now, altogether, that's remainder of 60. Um, now, I can use my tower and I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Go. So, seven, group, seven groups of eight gives me 56 altogether. So now I'm going to subtract it from 60, which gives me a remainder of four. Now, we need to slow down a little bit over here because we need to remember about the place value. We have ones and tens over here, right? So I could mark my ones and tens and because over here I would have to have a decimal point I could stop over here and I could ignore it but because there is a place value I don't need to carry on like that but I can work out the final value I could put a placeholder and ask myself how many groups of 8 would go into 40 tenths, which would be 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 groups of 8, which would give me the final answer. 5 times 8 gives me 40, and the final subtraction leaves me with going up to the previous slide. And that's the end of it. Or I could see that I still have a final remainder into 1s is 4 8s, and I could record it as 
I still want to divide the remainder of 4 into 8 parts, and that's a half, isn't it? So that would be that. That's 37 and a half. So going back to our previous problem, I will have to pause it up. I'm sorry. But let's remember this answer. 37 and a half. Okay? And as you can see, I've rotated my, all of my working out. Once again, I'm learning how, how to work with the software, but 3 eighths, I've done my division. So 3 eighths as a percentage is equal to 37 and a half and 5 tenths of a percentage. So what I've done is using my always method, I have multiplied it by 100, which I've done over here, and then I've divided the denominator by the numerator. Okay, we're going to do one more example before you go off into your independent practice. And we're going to follow the same steps. So let's have a look at the percentage value. Of so let's have, have a look and we'll see if we can find the percentage value of let's say four sevenths and this method is really good when we have the denominator that it's definitely not a factor of a hundred and we have denominators and numerators one of which could be an odd number and we can't simplify them anymore finding the percentage value for even numbers and numbers that are factors of 100 is really easy so let's go and let's follow the always method. So first, I'm going to copy down my fraction. And I want to multiply it by 100. So I'm multiplying it with a, by 100 with a denominator of 1. And I'm multiplying it straight across. And I'm doing it to take care of my place value later on. So that gives me 4 times 100 gives me 400. And the denominator 7 times 1 stays as 7. So now I will have to divide the denominator. And one more time, we're going to zoom in so we have some space, but we're following the same basic steps. To convert the fraction into percentage, we multiply it by 100, and then we divide the numerator by the denominator, and the, the, and the quotient is the percentage value. We only need to take care of one decimal place. So we'll try to zoom in now, and hopefully this time we won't make as much of a mess. And we had 400 sevenths, right? So that is a division problem of 400 divided by 7. And I really, really like to build my tower. So 7, 14. Let's see if we can have a smaller grain. 21. 28, 35, 42, 49, 56. Once again, we're going to finish over here because the dividend is 400, so we're not going to go above that number of groups of 7. So I can make a group of 7 out of 4, but I can definitely make a 7 groups of 7 out of 40. So the closest multiple of 7 is 35, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 groups of 7. So in the tens column, I'm going to put 5. Now I need to work out my remainder. Long division just helps me clear up my, uh, my remainders real quick. I can take away 5 from a 0, so I need to exchange. 10 take away 5 gives me 5. OK. I have a remainder of 50. 
Now the closest multiple of 7 to 50 is 49, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's 57. Ooh, once again, we're finishing with a 7. Take away 49. Now, 50 take away 49. That gives me a remainder of 1, which gives me 10, which gives me decimal point 1, and that would be remainder of 3. And I could carry on, but doing value up to one decimal point is usually when I want to stop. I could carry on. That would be 4 with a remainder of 2. Then it would be 2, 2, 2. That would be a really small fraction. But with one decimal po point, is that's where I want to stop. So now I know that 4, 7 is equal to 57 point one percent and as you can see that was fifty fifty seven point one pardon me for the handwriting but remember the always method multiply by hundred Divide by the numerator, by denominator. You only have to work out the value up to one decimal place because you we're not rocket scientists. For now, that's plenty of work. But to de determine the percentage value of any fraction, we multiply it by 100 and divide by the denominator. And good luck on your quiz.